About a year ago, I attempted my first Nuzlocke, suffering battle after battle after battle. And I'll spare you the time, I lost. But I'm a sore loser, so I'm back to win this time. If you don't know the rules, all you gotta know is my Pokemon are permanently dead if they faint once, must be nicknamed, and I can only catch the first Pokemon in each route. There's some other rules I'm using, but it's just level caps and set mode that matter really. So I present to you what I have coined my redemption Nuzlocke. I named myself Mark after a certain soldier, rose from my bed, and picked the frog, cause he's the coolest. His name became Glurb, and he kicked this Finnegan in the nuts. With that, we talked to mom and departed from town, never to be seen again. Once we got Pokeballs, our first encounter was a Bunnelby. We caught him and named him Trix. Then we came to the forest and found a Fletchling. A very good encounter we named Percent. Okay, so sometimes I'm lazy, whatever. A bit of fighting later, and we came to our first gym. A bug one, where Percent would feast. And he did, until he didn't. Yeah, I killed a bird within like 10 minutes of getting him because he got trapped in the fight by infestation. But hey, we move on, right? We left Santa Loon with a few long bits of story in our path. On Route 4, we found a Flabebe who we named AZ after a certain 9 foot tall fellow. We avoided every single fight on our path and then came to Professor Sycamore. We had to fight all three Kanto starters in one fight, but luckily the three Mons we had covered this team well, and we earned our choice between the three starters. I chose Charmander because, again, he is cool and actually practical later on. With the Cole in our party, we hit the road again. We met the champion and not villain guy before leaving Lumios, got sniffed up by Lucario, and caught a Furfur who we named Lol on Route 5. I don't like this thing. Tino tried to spin my block, but my flower baby would not take that, and fat ass blocked my path, so we needed a flute to get him going. We got an Esper on Route 6 named Yip, chased a dog in a maze, and had an odd romantic scene with the unimportant character. But it ended with getting the flute, so it was worth it. We could have caught the Snorlax, but killing it seemed like the best option for my mental health. Then it was a double battle with Helmet Hair and Tierno. Me and Serena kicked ass, as per usual. In the connecting cave, we caught a Whismur named Oppo. Then we caught a Mianfu on Route 8 and named it Fifer. Then we killed a Helioptile on Route 9, but caught the Machop in Glittering Cave and named it Cornelius. We encountered Team Flare for the first time. They were as you'd expect, and we left with the jaw fossil. We turned the jaw fossil into Tyrant, I only realized as I'm writing this script that I forgot to name this thing. And finally, we arrive in Salage City for our next gym leader. But first, we took our Route 10 encounter, which was a toddler eater named Bubbles. As the gym goes, well, when you have a box to choose from and the leader has two mons, yeah, this was over pretty fast. Fought Team Flare a couple more times as routine, and got to Geosinge, where we had to take Karina's two Lucarios on, which we did, because like I said, we have a box of options and a fire lizard. On route 11, we got a Staravia. Finally, another great flying type after I murdered my first one. With soup in the party, we continued. Reflection Cave gave us a carbink and I killed it, so... And the rest of this cave was kind of treacherous, but I survived on to Shalor City, where a rival fight awaited me. In the future, I knew this fight would get harder, but for now, I had the resources to deal with three mons easily. Totally didn't use all six mons in that fight. Now that the third gym was open, I suited up and advanced towards it, but this wouldn't go so smooth. If if you're expecting me to reset, get f I didn't lose six mons or anything, but on the gym trainers alone, I killed Bubbles and E. Cole. One of those being a valuable powerhouse fairy type for later game, and the other was just my favorite lizard, and he was gonna be overpowered. With my spirit of vengeance, we finally got our third badge, and beat that gym leader again with her own Pokemon shortly after, and named the Lucario she gave me Bruce Lee, and surfed up a tentacle, named it Wart, and finally we could leave this godforsaken place. On Route 12, we took this guy's Lapras for free and named it Plessy, then found a Tauros we named Beef jerky. Some skittle madness ensued, and we reached Kumreen City, where we would meet with the professor again. Sorry for already killing the lizard you gave me, man. Now, we would be taking the train to our next rival fight, and with some adjustments because of dead members, I managed to build a team to make it pass with zero deaths once again. Onto the old grass guy gym, where Soup Bird was eating good, and I thought I was adequately prepared for Ramos until Soup died to a goat. My mood was getting worse. We went to Route 13 and caught three floor shits, and I forgot to nickname them. These things are dumb anyways. On my way to the power plant, I ran into maybe 8,000 wild Pokemon fights. That was delightful. But eventually, we got there and we had to fight a Team Flare Grunt for entry. We put him down easy. Did he just kill Glurb? Why am I so garbage, man? Okay, so the dramatic ginger killed my favorite frog, and now we had issues. I looked at my box of dead mons, and although the number wasn't that high, every single mon in there was massively important later in the game. Okay, maybe not the pit bull, but the point is, if I kept playing like an idiot, I was going to lose every essential piece of my team and have nothing when the harder fights come around. I was gonna have to get tough, train, and uh, research fights. Probably should have done that from the start, but as a wise 
wise man once said, it was time to play the best goddamn Pokemon of my life. I unmasked because holy hell that thing was uncomfortable and set up a team for the eight flare fights the power plant had waiting. But honestly, this team would be a staple for every team flare fight this game had for me. Plus a couple adjustments later. It went smooth with a couple trips between the Pokemon Center and the plant in between and now our first big team flare expo was over. Before the next gym, I took a trip back to the rich person's house where I could catch a Magikarp and named it Encardo. This wouldn't be useful for the next gym, but good to save for later. On our way to Lumios, we saw a nine foot tall war criminal, but now it was time to kill everything inside the Eiffel Tower with three floor shits. And that we did, so onward. Also, the stupid fish turned into a mega dragon and the small brownie became Tyrannosaurus ass kicker, so we have that now. Not all Evos are important, but those things suck before, so they are. We left Lumios for the spooky route and another rival fight. Yeah, this was easy. Epic slide. Then we caught a weeping bell on Route 14 and named it Hole. Maybe not my most creative work. This old dude told a scary story to which I did not tip and we were in La Vare cities just like that. This was a fairy gym and we literally just caught a poison type on top of wart already so other than a little Mr. Mime trouble, smoothly it went. Now we had another team flare scuffle in the Pokeball factory but this was even easier than the power plant. But it ended in me getting my master ball so that's nice. On Route 15 we caught a Scorapy to name Rupee, got a DM from a not evil man, caught a Fungus to name, you guessed it, Sus on Route 16, and in the Lost Hotel, we got a Ponard, who would not be useful until he evolved at level 52. Frost Cavern was just Dodge Trainer Simulator with a side of easy team flare fight to save the big snowman, but I caught a Bergmite during that, which is pretty useless, so we rode the big fella through the snow and found a... Della Bird. Well, not all encounters can be good ones, I guess. And this encounter would be my last one for a long while because we were about to set a long story piece into motion. Then we arrived at the city with the big rock and the next gym. But first we put our rival down again. This fight just gets so easy when I actually have Pokemon to pick from. And the gym was psychic. We had a dark type steroid scorpion. You know the rest. Upon our exit, the not evil guy called our phone to conveniently tell us his version of the rapture was coming. And so as any 10 year old would, we set off to stop the terrorists in Lumios. We mugged the waiters and moved into the super secret mega hidden base. I moved the shelf. The glaring difficulty here was the three Lysander fights we would have to do because just surviving the first and easiest one, my team was damn near toasted. So getting through the later fights was seeming more and more like an issue, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We saw the superheroes, I don't actually know what they're supposed to be, and fight after fight and spin after spin, we moved slowly through the team flare base until we found the war criminal turned war prisoner. He told us a fairy tale of his past genocide adventure to revive a flower, and Lysander invited me into his private ditty suite. Little did I know I would be joining a threesome with a pale ice cream cone, but he went down easy. Then I got to push an inconsequential button because he was going to make the big machine come up anyways. But that being said, the big machine was here, and so was another Lysander fight. The second of the three. With my best built team, I narrowly survived this fight. And when I say narrow, I mean if Thrash by Beef Jerky didn't kill, he was going to die. So although we survived this fight, it was far too close for comfort and substantially easier than the next time we see Lysander, so I had to plan, and I did. But no matter how I built my team, time after time after time, I was never gonna win unless I sacrificed someone. It had been so long since our last Deadmon, I really didn't want to, but it was a necessity. So we threw the bunny in the party for the last time. We made our way down to the heart of the machine, me and Serena mugging admins on the way down, and eventually reached Evelcom, the big legendary who kills everything around it with Oblivion Wing. God, how do we beat this ball? Hey, they gave me a master ball for a reason, come on. Then Lysander barges in with his weird little flies and tries to kill a 10 year old once again, now with Mega Gyarados. The three other mons on this team went the same, but when Gyarados came out, so did Diggersby. He used Super Fang to cut Gyarados down to half health for free and checked out permanently. Fever was able to clean up the rest with U-Turn into Lapras, killing Gyarados, ending Team Flare, and making the rabbit's death useful. The ultimate weapon blew itself up with Lysander inside it, and we exited finally. The war criminal visits us again in his typical random fashion. On Route 18, we caught a Torkoal, a useful defensive powerhouse and our only fire type. We named it Durant and arrived in Kuraway Town, where we would meet and fight the professor again. This time again, he had the three candle starters, but fully evolved to hurt me. Must have been payback for me killing his lizard. This fight was routine, as expected, especially with Torkoal, but it did hurt to see what I could have had if I didn't kill E. Cole. On the waters of Kuraway, we found Lombre, who we named Lorembe, a good piece once it evolved. On Route 19, I literally couldn't find any 
anything but Drapion, who I already had, but eventually I got a stun fist to name Flat Stanley. After that, we had to fight Shauna, Tierno, and Trevor back to back to back, which was a bit troubling to plan for, but I handled myself. Then I arrived in Snowbell, where I had to go chase the gym leader down a couple routes. So on Route 20, I got a Noctowl to name Hoot, and in the Pokemon Village, I got a Gotharita to name Gorth. But now that the leader was back, I could do the gym, which took a while because one, the gym trainers were kind of brutal, and two, I couldn't solve this children's puzzle. But when I got to the gym leader, he was actually the easiest one in the game and got mopped up by Lucario alone. Time to set out for Victory Road. On the way, I got an Altaria on Route 21 to name Cloud. Yes, any creativity I had is dead by this point in the run. But alas, we came to Victory Road, where a rival battle, the Elite Four, and the Champion would await us. But most of all, my chance at redemption. I watched a slightly dramatic display of the road opening and began my class. Climb. And quickly came my final, most valuable, prestigious, powerful victory road encounter. A Pokemon that could change the tide of any battle. I got Lickitung. Yes, I got the freaky mon for my dramatic final encounter. Anyways, I turned that thing into an HM slave, so I guess it wasn't completely useless. Then was honestly just a long string of preparing specifically for each of these trainers, getting a little bit lost, and then running back and forth to the Pokemon Center. Until the final rival battle, which, although we spent a long time preparing, went completely to plan, and therefore, good. Turns out Bisharp's kinda good actually. She gave us some super useful max revives, gotta love those. And we continued with the rest of the path, which took over an hour. But eventually, we survived all the veterans trying to touch me and arrived at the grand old Pokemon League, which looks so cool in this game by the way. And so now, separating me from redemption and success was five trainers who could realistically sweep my team if I make one wrong move. I thought about this, like I spent two days just planning my team for this, not streaming, just just trying to figure out a working combo. And issue after issue after issue, it seemed like the team could not exist. But eventually, I landed on what I thought to be just the right solution. Let me introduce you to the squad. One, Tyrantrum. I haven't really made good use of him yet, but there's potential with him. A massive physical attacker and physical tank. Only issue is it's a paperweight as far as special defense. Two, AZ the Floor Jess. The opposite to Tyrantrum. Massive special stats, but lackluster physically, but also just the best type in the game with Fairy. Three, Wart the Tentacruel. A surprisingly well-rounded pivot and bulk option with typing my team needs and the move Toxic Spikes to set up poison early. 4. Warmbay, the Ludicolo. My team needs a grass type, and this is my best call, with well-rounded stats and good resistances. 5. Encardo, the Gyarados. Good coverage in his moves, a physical powerhouse, brings the intimidate ability, and is flying type, so a solution to my otherwise earthquake-prone team. 6. Finally, Bruce Lee the Lucario. When all else fails, hit the mega button on this thing and let it clean house with massive offense, a good move set, and a shit ton of main character syndrome. After after two days, this was it. For better or for worse, 20 hours of progress was hanging on this team. I filled up on heals and departed for my conquest. My easiest opponent in this Elite Four was gonna be Drasna, the Dragon Trainer, so she was up first. And I was right, she was easy pickings, with Dazzling Gleam and a bit of Lucario to start the fight off. One down. Heal up, and the next was Seabolt, the Water Trainer. He wasn't gonna be terrible overall, but he did almost crash my emulator. And on opening, he had a dangerous Quancher that only Florges could possibly deal with, but as long as that went well, which it did, we would be fine. The rest of his team went down easy for me, as I thought. So two down, and now on to the last two, who I feared a lot more. We chose Malva, the fire trainer next. Her pyro using normal roar caused some complications early on for floor Jest, which got Ludicolo damn near in the grave, but went down eventually. Tyrantrum did his work with Talonflame and Torkoal, proving why we brought him, and Wart cleaned up Chandelure. Three down. Now it was Wickstrom. His team was nothing special, and I knew that, except for one mon, Aegislash. This thing has massive defense and massive attack, switching between the two as it pleases, and I had nothing to deal with it. It also didn't help that off the start, I struggled massively to kill a keychain because of torment making it take twice as long. As a result, Klefki set up spikes three times the most damage it could possibly do, putting my whole team down a peg. Global Pass and Scizor went down fine, and out came Satan. I struggled to kill this thing once Gyarados couldn't fight it any longer, and after debating how to switch off Tyrantrum for like five minutes, I decided sacrifice was necessary, and willingly sent Tyrantrum off to his grave. To which he did not agree, taking the hands of death and pointing them back on Aegislash with one earthquake unexpectedly, meaning I kept my entire team alive for one final fight. My 
six mons versus the champion six with my redemption at stake. With this being the last ever fight, this was hardly a nuzlocke anymore. I could sacrifice everything in this fight so long as I make it out as the winner. I'd been waiting for this day for a year and this was it. Diantha opens with Hulucho, which I got to prepare for, and Tyrantrum does that. Then Gudra, who is perfect food for AZ. Then her own Tyrantrum, who I happen to know pretty damn well, and AZ handles that too. Then comes Aurorus, where Lucario steps in for the four times weakness. Then a Gorgeist? Yeah, I don't really know why this thing's here, but it was nothing in Cardo and Tyrantrum couldn't handle. And finally, Mega Gardevoir was the last guard to my success. This thing wouldn't go down easy, and neither would I. Tyrantrum went down, but next try was AZ. Fight fairy with fairy, you know. AZ died too. If I didn't handle this thing soon, shit could go sideways. But Wart would never let that happen. Surviving a super effective psychic on 30 health and ending this fight with a poison jab. And just like that, it was finally done with. Yes! Where did the mouse go? 22 hours and I finally avenged my other dumpster fire of a Nuzlocke. I was put into the Hall of Fame and celebrated as I should be for my achievements. And if you care, when the war criminal tried to assault me, I mopped him too. So that's it. Thank God. And thank you for watching, of course. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed, and maybe I'll see you in a future stream sometime.